Welcome to the review on percentage yield, which is one of the calculations you'll have to carry out during your C3 exam. Now, usually this one's going to be worth two marks to you, so it's well worth understanding how to do this. First thing we need to understand then are the three key terms. So the first one at the top there we can see is the yield, which quite simply is just how much of a substance there is. Then we're going to break it down to two different terms. We have our predicted yield, which is the expected mass, which we actually get from the balanced chemical equations and calculating it using the atomic masses from the periodic table. And the second one there is the actual yield, which is the mass of product we made during the experiment. That's what they'll actually give you in the question, so you don't have to worry about calculating that. So what we can see here is that we've actually got the formula there to calculate percentage yield. Now they don't actually give this to you on the exam paper, so you do have to memorise it. Good news is that you can actually just remember it as simply as it's going to be a smaller of the two numbers in the question divided by the larger of the two, and then multiply that by 100. If you can learn the equation properly, it's going to be the actual yield divided by your predicted yield and times that by 100. So here we've got an example of the kind of question that might come up. So in the reaction between sodium and chlorine, the actual yield of sodium chloride was 8 grams, but the predicted yield was 10 grams. So in the question there, we have the two pieces of information we need to use in that calculation. So because our actual yield was 8 and our predicted is 10, the calculation we have to do is 8 divided by 10, and then we times that by 100 to get our answer as a percentage. And the answer to that one is 80%. Once we've actually got these numbers, we need to understand what they're telling us. So if we have a yield that has 0%, then that means we made no product. So that's obviously not a good thing. If we had a yield of 100%, however, that means we didn't lose any product in this process, which is the goal of any industrial process is to be as close to that 100% as possible. So if those of you doing the higher tier paper, you will have to do a slightly more complex calculation. Now, we're going to work through one together over the next couple of slides here. So this should break it down to the individual little stages and hopefully let you see how to do this. At the top there, what we actually have are the chemicals already in their balanced equation. So we've got two of our sodiums reacting with one molecule of chlorine gas to make two molecules of sodium chloride. Now the question you're likely to be asked is something along the lines of what mass of sodium chloride could be made from 2.3 grams of sodium reacting with excess chlorine. Do notice the fact they do give you the atomic mass of our sodium, which is 23, and the molecular mass of our sodium chloride, which is 58.5 in the question itself. So the first stage that we actually need to go through here is writing down the important masses. Now, do make sure that if there are balanced parts of that equation, so if we've got our two sodiums, for example, we do remember that and multiply up the original masses. Otherwise, you've got it wrong at that first step. So, remember, we don't need to worry about chlorine at all. We just need to look at our sodium and the sodium chloride. So, our mass of sodium is 23, as we see from the question there, and because there are two molecules of it, then our mass there is going to be 2 times 23, which is 46. And then on the other side, we've got our sodium chloride, which has a mass of 58.5. Again, we've got two molecules there, so 2 times 58.5 gives us our 117. Step two, then, is to actually read the question to find out how much we're using. So we can see here that we're using 2.3 grams of sodium. Finally, for step three, what we actually need to do is divide that mass from step two by the relative atomic mass from step one. So we can see at the bottom there that we've got our 2.3, which is our mass from step two, and we divide it by that atomic mass that we worked out in step one, which is 46 for our sodium. Then, because we need to know the amount of our sodium chloride, we just multiply that answer by the relative molecular mass of the product from step one once more, which was 117. So you can see at the bottom there, our final calculation that we need to do is 2.3 divided by 46, and then we multiply that by the 117, which gives us our final answer of 5.85 grams. 
Obviously, we know that most of our chemical processes won't have a yield of 100% because there's always going to be something that can get in the way and mean that we lose a certain amount of our product. Now, we've got to remember four different ways that this could occur. So if you're exam, you need to remember that the mass could be lost through filtration, where some bits get left on the bits of filter paper, the evaporation process, when we're transferring liquids from one container to another, because that's not a perfect process either, and finally through heating. So just remember that any of these processes that occur means that we will be losing some of the mass, and that means that the overall percentage yield will then decrease. The last thing to remember then is that when we've got these high yields, that just tells us that we're wasting fewer of the reactants we started with. So the closer to 100% it is, the better it is because the more sustainable that process will be. If we've got less waste in terms of the reactants, then that process can happen for a longer period of time without having to involve new reactants. Now, it also means that we're getting as much product as possible, which means that we're going to be reducing our costs. Anytime we can reduce costs is a bonus because that means that when we then go on to sell that chemical, the company can make more profits. So that then concludes our little review on percentage yield. Obviously, you can watch the video again and have a go at the actual calculations yourself to make sure that you know how to do this. This will be a two mark question on your exam paper and it's quite a nice easy two marks to get just by memorising the actual calculation and putting the numbers in the right places.